Ready? All right. Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining and thank you to the Hilltop YMCA for hosting us today. It is great to be back on the Hilltop and with some of our great partners uh, here at the Y. During the earliest days of the pandemic, the Hilltop Y served as an emergency shelter for 50 women escaping intimate partner abuse. I'm so grateful to the team here at the Y for stepping up in such a thoughtful and compassionate fashion during a very difficult time, an unprecedented time in the midst of this pandemic. When you think back to the spring of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic was still new and uncertain, but we witnessed just how quickly and dramatically the most vulnerable among us were affected. Today, we have the benefit of data to illustrate these effects in greater detail. While most middle income and high income earners have largely avoided the negative long term economic implications of the pandemic, many of our low income neighbors have been devastated. From July 2020 through June 2021, Franklin County shelters served more than 6,600 individuals, including 1,200 children. Low wage employment has fallen 25.6% since the pandemic first began. One in 10 Ohio tenants are now concerned they won't be able to pay next month's rent. And as so often the case, there are also significant racial disparities. Despite representing 23.8% of the population here in Franklin County, black residents, our neighbors, make up 64% of those residing in our shelter system. Just as our healthcare professionals are working more shifts and longer hours to meet historically high demand, the extraordinary individuals working to keep our shelter safe and open are working harder and longer hours too. Conditions are much more difficult as well. From a growing number of new clients to rising rates of drug and alcohol use, violence, suicide attempts and deaths, the pandemic has in many cases made a very challenging situation worse, and in some cases downright dangerous uh, for these incredible staff people. In 2020, the Columbus Division of Police responded to more than 1,800 calls at permanent supportive housing locations and more than 650 calls at shelters. Deaths in permanent supportive housing programs have increased 91% compared to last year. And some locations are reporting 35% increases in year-over-year -year incidents involving substance use, mental health, and violence. These engagement specialists, case managers, housekeepers in our shelters need and deserve our support. So I'm proud to announce today nearly $9 million from the American Rescue Plan to support our shelter system. We would not be here today without the leadership of President Joe Biden, Senator Sherrod Brown, and Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. We are able to make this investment because of their leadership and willingness to invest in our most vulnerable in this community and communities around our state and country. First, we're dedicating $1.87 in surge funding for five emergency shelters, Lutheran Social Services, Faith Mission, Mary Haven Engagement Center, Southeast Men's Shelter, the YWCA Family Center, the YMCA Van Buren Center will use the funding they receive to provide staff raises and retention payroll and signing bonuses, as well as funds for cleaning and sanitation supplies to protect our neighbors against COVID-19. Next up, the city will provide $4.9 million for the Community Shelter Board to train and embed mental health specialists at our local shelters. As Michelle Heritage will elaborate in just a moment, we'll train these specialists to provide on-site crisis intervention, enabling shelters to ensure better care for the residents, reduce deaths and violence, and conserve city resources by reducing calls for police and EMS services. Finally, 
the city will help move 350 men into temporary housing from their current home in the downtown Y, which is in need of urgent and costly repairs. The YMCA of Central Ohio has determined that the best thing for these men is to relocate them to safer and better conditions, places where we want our neighbors to be safe, to relocate them while a long-term housing solution is finalized. The $2 million we are providing will help them do just that. And we are so pleased to offer our support. Our partners at Franklin County are strongly considering proposals to provide additional funds to these programs as well. Another great shine of our collaboration and partnership in this city, the city and the county, nonprofits and corporate Columbus working together. It's now my pleasure to introduce Council President Shannon Harden. Thank you, Mayor Ginther, and thank you all for being here to my friends, Erica Clark Jones, Michelle Heritage, Tony Collins, and all other community advocates. Um, thank you to the mayor for his leadership in bringing us together. I hope it is coming through loud and clear today that Columbus and Franklin County are stepping up. On top of the work we, are, we do every year with the partners standing here, we are investing millions of dollars in housing and alternative crisis response. We've heard the community. We've seen the impacts of COVID compounded by job losses. As we fight through the pandemic, we have to acknowledge cracks in our social safety net. Today, we are knitting that net back together to take care of our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors who are in need. That is the heart of the Columbus Way. Some issues will take years to address, and some must be dealt with immediately. So I want to thank Christy and Tony and Michelle and Erica, and the mayor, our partners on the front lines who are fighting to help families and residents in crisis. I also want to thank the hundreds of people who are working and volunteering in our shelters and food banks and in nonprofits all across this city serving our homeless. Thank you for sticking with it. You are saving lives. It's no secret that Columbus is growing and desperately needs more housing, especially more affordable housing. In the long term, the city will help to do what it takes to get more homes and apartments built, but we also need to work with the private sector to make sure that folks working full time can earn enough to pay their rent or a mortgage on their own. But while we know, but while we work on these things, we need to act now to add capacity at our shelters and to make them safer. I'm proud to represent my fellow members of council as we begin to move the ordinance uh, the mayor discussed forward in the coming weeks. As he said, $1.2 million to support the expansion of the Choices Shelter to house up to two dozen more women. $1.1 million for Mary Haven to help individuals with substance abuse uh, uh, disorders transition into independent housing. More than $2 million from the city of Columbus to help move men out of downtown into better units with the YMCA and a bold plan from the shelter board to do their own version of alternative crisis response. So our police officers uh, cannot and should not be on every call every day. It will cost more than $9 million over a few years to get the right response in the shelter for those facing drug and mental health issues. We are in a time of high stress on everyone, but especially people who work in our shelters. Folks who love their jobs but are struggling with burnout after more than a year of service amidst a pandemic. We've heard about these stories from some of the employees who've been insulted, um, themselves struggling with depression. And as the mayor said, it's time for us to stand up and support them. We need to give them our support. We need to make sure that one person's challenge does not cascade into violence. There are no silver bullets to the complex issues like homelessness or mental health and addiction, but we can make smart investments that can benefit all of us. At this point, I'd like to turn the podium over to my friend, the President and CEO of Adam H., Ms. Erica Clark-Jones. Good afternoon, everyone. 
My name is Erica Clark Jones, and I serve as the Chief Executive Officer of the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County, or your Adam H. Thank you, Mayor Ginther, President Hardin, for this really important announcement today. I am continually grateful to be a part of a community that is responsive to the needs of all of its people, regardless of their circumstance or their address, temporary or permanent. Adam H. monitors several community health indicators, including county suicide rates and overdose death rates, to inform our investment decisions within our network of more than 30 community-based providers. Through our recent community needs assessment, we see that the need for timely access to quality mental health and addiction services continues to grow around the county. The prevalence of mental illness was increasing in Ohio nationally even before the pandemic. Uh, also, one in five adults across the nation experienced a mental illness in 2020. That's roughly 20%. In Franklin County, the prevalence for mental illness is slightly higher at one in approximately every four individuals. So a little over 20% and a little under 25%. The stress, anxiety, loss, and grief related to the pandemic has served to amplify mental health needs across the county. Symptomatic of this fact is that overdose deaths climbed 47% in 2020 to more than 800 deaths in Franklin County alone. There has been an increase in mental health related dispatches as the mayor and both President Hardin suggested today from the Columbus Police Department, which averages 65 mental health dispatch uh, calls each day in 2021. Unfortunately, the prevalence of serious mental illness is higher among uh, those among us without housing. National estimates indicate that one in four homeless individuals have a serious mental illness. Not surprisingly, there's a clear relationship between behavioral health and housing. A loss of housing can contribute to the development of a behavioral health diagnosis, and a behavioral health diagnosis can contribute to a loss of housing. Each traumatic situation makes it more difficult to recover from the other. There are many vulnerabilities that individuals facing homelessness also encounter that are significant barriers to recovery. This includes stigma, social isolation, high rates of violence, and lack of access to reliable and affordable care. Adam H is working with community partners, including the Community Shelter Board, to expand the crisis care continuum to ensure equity and access for more individuals in Franklin County. Now, this work includes the development of a new mental health and addiction crisis center to serve as a central destination for care. And we thank the City of Columbus for their support, as well as the Franklin County Board of Commissioners and the Central Ohio Hospital Council. The crisis center will serve as a cornerstone of crisis care that includes a range of community-based services and support. However, for some in our community, increasing access to services means meeting individuals where they are, bringing behavioral health professionals to them in the spaces where they can offer critical support in a most timely and trusting way. Direct engagement in safe spaces, like our shelters, like our permanent supportive housing units, provides an opportunity to build trust, increase human well-being and resiliency, and ensure that all people, regardless of circumstance or income, have access to quality mental health professionals and linkages to ongoing care. The city's recognition that more behavioral health boots on the ground are needed is an important step to strengthen the behavioral health workforce. It is through this type of collaboration that we will meet the demands of our residents. I am also encouraged by the number of Adam H. provider agencies who work with individuals experiencing homelessness that are participating in this collaborative effort. Adam H. looks forward to the community learnings from this expanded, responsive approach to service administration. And throughout this implementation, Adam H. will assist in monitoring and evaluation to better understand the impact of this unique opportunity. I now would like to welcome my colleague, my friend, Michelle Heritage, Executive Director of the Community Shelter Board, to introduce this new bold opportunity to serve some of the most vulnerable in our community. Well, good afternoon. I'm Michelle Heritage, Executive Director of the Community Shelter Board. Thank you to Erica and special thanks to Mayor Ginther and Council President um, Hardin. 
Under your leadership, Columbus is a unique and special community in how we invest in essential services for our most vulnerable citizens. Where other communities may be fail falling apart right now, your leadership is pulling us together. As noted, we have seen a dramatic increase in crisis situations in our homeless shelters and supportive housing locations. This is in the form of mental health crisis, suicide attempts, drug overdoses, and deaths. Although many people experiencing homelessness come to us with significant challenges, the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the, these needs to a crisis level. More and more often, police and EMTs are called to our facilities to deal with these emergencies. By having mental health crisis specialists in every shelter and supportive housing location, we can de-escalate crisis situations before they result in violence and harm. We can help people facing homelessness get connected to the most appropriate community mental health resources. This is what I like to call the quadruple win because it will do four significant things. One, better address the mental health and crisis needs among people facing homelessness. Two, significantly reduce police and ambulance runs. Three, increase the mental health workforce development pipeline. And four, enhance the safety for everyone in our community. We're excited to work with our friends at Columbus State and our partner agencies and Adam H to create a workforce development program with training, certification, and continuing education to develop people with the skills and expertise to fill these new positions. We've talked about how hard the pandemic has been on people experiencing homelessness, but it's been hard on the people who work in our shelters too. They have risked their own health and well-being to keep our neighbors experiencing homelessness safe. They've done an amazing job. Now's the time to acknowledge these first responders with increased resources and get them to a living wage and better retention for these essential workers. Fewer people living on the streets and in camps and more people back in their homes working, going to school and fully participating in our community makes Columbus and Franklin County a better place for everyone. I'm proud of all the innovative and collaborative solutions we're celebrating today and grateful as always to stand alongside such dynamic and thoughtful leaders who care about the most vulnerable in our community. Thank you. I'm pleased to turn the podium over to my good friend and colleague, Tony Collins, President and CEO of the YMCA of Central Ohio. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here at the Hilltop Y. We're so proud to host this and so thankful to be here to talk about this subject today. I want to take a quick moment and thank our Y team and our executive director, Teresa Whittington, for hosting us today. The Hilltop Y, as the mayor told you, really serves as a responsive community center. We have 3,200 people who visit this Y on a regular basis, kids, teens, families who benefit from the community center aspect. And when needed, it was responsive and helped host uh, the women most in need in our community during the, the really tough times of the pandemic uh, shutdowns. Uh, a lot of folks, you know, think about our whys and th think about the why as a, the community centers that we're able to offer. We've got four Y community centers in Columbus, 13 throughout Central Ohio. Some folks know the why about it from our child care. We have 100 child care centers throughout Central Ohio. But not a lot of folks know that last night the Y, the y had 1,500 plus people underneath the roof and underneath the care of the YMCA. We're talking about Long Street today, but we have folks from uh, in a number of spaces, including our Van Buren uh, Shelter for Women and Families and a number of other sites around Central Ohio in which we've been involved in the supportive housing and shelter work for a long time. We're appreciative today, and, and I want to say this, on, on behalf of myself, on behalf of our board chair, Mary Alk, on behalf of our staff team, and most importantly, on behalf of those folks we serve, Mayor Ginther, Council President Hardin, we thank you for this support. We thank you for this effort, this leadership, uh, this uh, funding, this program, this initiative is going to have a tremendous impact on our ability to serve those most in need, as well as our ability to continue to bring in team members that want to do this work and, and keep them involved. Our Y has been committed to permanent supportive housing programs as a critical part of our mission, helping all people reach their full potential and providing them a safe place to be. Our downtown Y is constructed in 1923 and has served the Columbus community for almost 100 years. The building currently serves more than 300 Columbus residents who would otherwise be homeless. Over time, renovations and upgrades have occurred, but most recently, within this past decade, it's become increasingly apparent that the maintenance needs of this building are beyond and outpacing the YMCA's resources. 
This support will enable us to work with our housing partners to explore high quality housing opportunities for our residents, where they will continue to receive, I'm sorry, where they will continue to receive YMCA benefits and supports and services. A relocation expert, Rosetta Brown, will assist in assessing each individual's housing needs for each resident to ensure the proper resources are in place before the resident moves to a new home. Partnerships between our, our local supportive housing developers and the Y are taking place right now to develop a replacement housing for 125 permanent supportive housing residents where they will continue to receive Y services. The remaining 200 residents will need a strategic intentional housing plan to adequately and safely identify affordable low-income housing for them to continue to be successful. This funding also provides much needed help to serve our Y team with the support and tools to serve those most in need in our community. Thank you. We look forward to our continued partnership with the city, with the county, with our colleagues at the YWCA, Southeast, Lower Lights, ADMH, and especially our partners with Community Shelter Board. Thank you again for being here. Thank you so much, uh, President Harden, uh, Erica, Michelle, uh, Tony, Mary, thanks for your leadership as chair of the board. Um, as all of you have heard time and time again, there is a clear and immediate need for shelter support in our community. This pandemic is not over. It has destabilized vulnerable families and created new hardships for the compassionate and exemplary individuals and organizations who serve them. This is not a one-off effort. This is part of our ongoing commitment to uplifting underserved communities and supporting all of our neighborhoods. The cornerstone of my equity agenda and part of the city's recovery and resiliency committee that's headed up in partnership with the city, the county, nonprofits, and corporate Columbus. But thanks to the American Rescue Plan, we can offer valuable assistance right now to help them recover from recent challenges and become even more resilient to better serve individuals and families in Columbus. Another great example of the Columbus Way, where the city, the county, nonprofits, private sector are all coming together because we want to build a dynamic and inclusive recovery. But in order to get there, we have to take care of our neighbors who right now are facing uh, crisis-like situations on many fronts. Be happy to take any questions.